If you've been using your kayak for any length of time, you need to do some repairs to it to fix things like this. Let me take through it from A to Z. While you can use do-it-yourself tools, and in fact, I read an interesting article on paddling.com, and I'm gonna cover their technique as well, but the best way to do it is to get one of these Hobie welders. The reason you want to use the Hobie welder is it is more durable than the much less expensive welder you can get from Harbor Freight. Now there are two basic types of tips that heat up and that's what you're going to use to melt the uh, cracks and the shavings back into the hull of your kayak. Uh, one is one that looks like this and it's got a hole in the top where you will insert your material and then it will melt it into the kayak. The other one is a flat tip, and you'll use that to spread everything around. Now, you can get material from your kayak manufacturer that's going to match the color on your boat, but this is always pretty expensive. Another option is to go to Amazon, and you can get pretty much any color you want, as long as it's white or red, and this is a lot less expensive and is the same stuff as this. Just be sure you look for HDPE. Now, if you don't want to do that, you've probably got the material you need right in your refrigerator. A lot of containers like this are made out of HDPE, and you can tell on the bottom, it'll have the triangle with the number two there, and even have the letters saying HDPE. So you can cut something like this up and use that to repair your kayak. Again, if you don't care about the color, it doesn't really matter. Now, regardless of the, whether you use the Hobie welder or the DIY tools I'm about to show you, you need a pair of heavy leather gloves because you are working with heat. I recently read an article on paddling.com that offered an interesting do-it-yourself solution that avoids having to get the professional tools. And what they recommended you do is you get a spoon and you heat it and you use it to melt those shavings back into your, uh, the hull of your boat. I would rather use one of these putty knives because it has a more of a flat surface. The last thing, and this comes from the people that do racing kayaks, is they recommend you do a light sanding on your hull to remove all the smaller shavings and imperfections that may also be there so your boat will move smoother through the water. Do a light sanding with 400, then graduate to 600 and 800 grit. And again, you're not doing a heavy sanding, you're just kind of going over it lightly just to knock down the fuzz. So let's get going. The first thing we'll do, since it's easy, is the do-it-yourself approach. I forgot to mention the heat gun. I like using the heat gun basically to go lightly over the surface of the kayak to raise the temperature. Because remember, this is all about melting the plastic into the hull and smoothing it out. Now, you got to be really careful if you use a heat gun because you don't actually want to melt anything with this. You just want to raise that temperature to make it easier and faster for the Hobie welder or the putty knife to do its job. Using the putty knife approach, what I'm gonna do is I've got a camping stove, I'm gonna heat it up. Remember to wear your gloves, but after this is hot, what you'll do is you'll take it and you'll run it along the hull of your kayak to smooth out all of these imperfections. Okay, here we go. Press down and move. Press down and move. So the do-it-yourself technique works pretty well. And so why would you ever want to get one of these Hobie welders? Well, the reason is that one, you've got to have an open flame of propane going all the time. And two, you've got to keep putting that putty knife in and out, in and out, in and out. And it takes a while for it to heat up. Whereas with the welder, it's going to have a hot tip all the time and you can just move it across the hull at a steady uh, rate of speed and do the same thing. So in the end, 
the Hobie welder will end up being a faster solution, but if you don't want to spend the money on this, the do-it-yourself works fine as well. The other reason for the Hobie welder is because of the tip that allows me to feed the HDP in and melt into deep gouges. And that's where the do-it-yourself technique is going to have a little bit of a problem because it's not going to be able to melt a piece of HDPE as efficiently as the welder. Let me show you what I mean here on this spot right here. I can just take the welder and just move it slowly across and you see all those imperfections disappear immediately. And I can just keep working across a wider section of the hull to smooth everything out. So what's the advantage of this tip over the other one? Well, it has a wide surface on the bottom, so it can be used to smooth out all the shavings, just like the other one. But it has the advantage of being able to feed the HDPE in on the top. It melts and it comes out here on the bottom. And this is perfect for filling in a gouge. I've got a small gouge right here. I would normally just take the flat part of this and smooth it over. But I want to show you how this will work. It's real simple. You just feed it in the top and you can see it's melting coming out the bottom and I'm just going to put it down on the gouge and gently feed in material. I'm using red just so you can see it. Doesn't really matter to me what the bottom of my kayak looks like. And then if you have some overspray you just smooth it out. So you can see that that's a very fast way to fill in a gouge. After you're done pushing all the shavings back in, then the last step is to do a light sanding starting at 400 going to 600 and 800. And this isn't like sanding wood. You're just going to kind of run it over the top like that just to knock down the little small shavings that aren't worth heat sinking back into the hole of your kayak. So about that much with each level of grit, and then you're done. It's worth spending an hour or two at the end of the season to go ahead and do this cleanup, because then you'll have a smoother, faster running kayak in the next season. And, you know, it's really not that hard to do. Just take some time. If you guys have suggestions on how to do this easier, quicker, faster, better, well, throw it down below, because I'm all ears.